is the magnet. Welcome back to a very interactive session with the Director General of National Broadcasting Commission, Professor Armstrong Idachaba. Thank you very much for enlightening us on the program, sir. Thank you, madam. Let's please take a switch over to DSO again. People are saying that there may be loss of job because there won't be transmitting stations. Is that correct? No, far from it. In fact, there will be more jobs okay. on account of the digital switchover. Uh, don't forget that it's an entirely, it's, it's more like an engineering revolution. Uh, all the analog equipment, transmitters, with digitization have become, become useless. So in, in, the, in the place of analog transmitters, you have to put uh, digital transmitters. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the Nigerian territorial space, we have seen that for us to cover the entire country, we are going to require at least 4,000 transmitters wow. across country. You know, if you ask DSTV and all the people who are operating nationally, of mm. course, they have more than 3,000 transmitters across the country for mm. them to reach all the facets mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so even for the analog transition to, di to digital switch, it's going to be like that. So who are the guys that are going to man those transmitters? Of course, Nigerian engineers. Are they trained well enough? Well, are well they we, we qualified? That I think that those who are smart mm. are actually are, are advancing their, their exam. Scaling up. Exactly. And that is how it should happen. Mm. Right? Even, even within the studio, you know, you also need to upgrade mm. your studio equipment mm. to be digital compliant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because you need to produce at the studio level before you transmit. Do so you know, we the private players, we still have the challenge of we take our program to the station, say they have to scale to frame. Yeah, <laughs> because they are not, they are, they are not upgraded. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So my question now is, personally, self-development, yes. Maybe that is where the fear is coming from, that they will lose job. Because if you are not up to your game, you will not fit in. Don't forget, there are, there are also younger people that are going to schools to acquire digital technology oh, definitely. knowledge. Definitely. So those ones are handy. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the conservative in NTA or Radio Nigeria thinks that his job is secure in the new digital era, new then, number. Then, then, then he is mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Now, you can't talk about digital switchover without talking of the set of buses. Yes. And it also came up when we had that interaction during the webinar. Mm. And... Um, how affordable would this be? I think uh, Rosa Southwood was like, it should be subsidized for the average Nigeria. Let me use your word, yeah. average, not ordinary now. Yeah. Average Nigeria. Do you think we'll be ready for that? Ideally, and, 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 and that's correct. In, mm. in most countries of the world where the digital switchover has happened, uh, there's been some kind of social incentives for, the, for those who are the lower rung. Mm -hmm. you know? um, even, even in very rich America, it had to happen. Uh, what we did in Nigeria at the initial stage was to uh, provide some incentive boxes that were hugely subsidized, about, mm. about uh, a million boxes so far. We gave in the pilot areas where we began free mm -hmm, of charge, mm -hmm. in Jaws, Kaduna, Roshun, uh, fine. I mean, but again, looking at the, the, the economic W w position of the country. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's a regime that is sustainable. <laughs> so we are beginning to think that uh, the, the component participants, uh, the system itself will have to ev evolve a way that uh, it bears the cost. But we are very concerned. I'm mm -hmm. also very concerned about the affordability of the ordinary man. Uh, mm -hmm. What have we done, you know, to address that problem? What we did is to deregulate you know, the, the box manufacturing exactly. process. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, licensed at least 13 companies wow. yeah, to produce those boxes in mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. Again, about employment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those box manufacturers are going to engage Nigerians, the people who are going to make the cartons that they will put the box mm -hmm. in country, the people who bring the component. Exactly, it will be all done here. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we have also deregulated the middleware component, the software produ mm -hmm. producing companies that are going to handle you know, the, the middleware infusion in the boxes, mm. which is also uh, a, a, a high-tech intellectual property mm. uh, endeavor. Mm. We, so we have InView that has been doing it, and then we also uh, license a company, Renmo. Mm. So between the two, we believe that uh, uh, competition will drive down the price. Mm -hmm. So we are looking mm -hmm. at uh, the boxes going down, not uh, being very, very affordable uh, to the ordinary man. But we mm. also will use this opportunity 
to appeal to politicians. That's uh, something I say. When during elections, politicians mm. buy helmet, you know, for Kada riders and buy rice and all that. Constituency projects, eh? Yeah. So, so like, they can easily also at the local government state level uh, subsidize those boxes. Okay. Yeah, so that mm. their yeah, people can have access mm. to information. All right. So now, when you say these boxes, Steph, we are looking at it. For instance, I'm thinking the set of boxes, is it the same as the normal decoder, for instance, exactly. you know how, because like everybody now can afford the cheapest, I want to believe, start times that virtually all homes in Nigeria, you know, they have. So is it the same or what is the difference? Sir? Yeah, it's exactly like, um, okay, it's decoder. exactly like a decoder, but mm. the, this distinguishing future mm. with the set-top box mm. is that it takes cognizance of the fact that most Nigerians now have analog television in the house. Mm. Right? Mm. And we don't expect that they are going to throw away those TVs. Exactly. So what the set-top box does is to convert mm. digital signal, reconvert it within the box, mm. you know, and make it receivable to the analog television. Okay. So with your analog TV, you can receive digital content. We are still on the local content producers, particularly those who are striving to make an impact. How do you think they can be encouraged? I mean, you don't work for any public organization, and you want them to be innovative and creative, how can they be encouraged to also produce premium content competitively, comparatively to whether the um, international ones and those that you want to see on the media? This is a brilliant question, and one is, that's very regular to the content production industry. Uh, it is, we intend to, to attain that two ways. One, we intend to drive the proposition and make it attractive in such a way that advertisers, mm -hmm. you know, the advertising traffic will move to the digital platform. Okay. So that way, anybody who is able, you know, to, to, to do qualitative content, you know, will have a ready buying by the advertising sector. And that, of course, transfers to monetization of content. Now, secondly, we have also deliberately as a policy building a regime that will create what you call digital access fee you know, in terms of access to the set-top box. Just some little amount of money that you pay to gain access to the box. Okay. Now, the whole idea of that money is for us to collect the money and create what you call um, a, 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 a trust fund. Okay. A, a trust fund for content production. Okay, so totally local content production. Okay. And then we hope that we get credible Nigerians, you know, distinguished, believable Nigerians like you. I can see you are well covered uh, <laughs> in the spiritual. So highly spiritualized Nigerians with good... <laughs> Uh, credentials to mm. to manage the content mm. and then I think from there we can commission uh, so local yeah. content production Production's support yeah. production uh, in a way that we can deliberately infuse uh, our local content philosophy into our own content delivery platform brilliant idea sir mm. thank you very much and still talking about uh, public and private practitioners do you think there is a level playing field from your point of view and from the regulation point of view well, yeah, in terms of the applicability of the broadcasting code, of course, uh, is the same. Uh, you, there was something you raised earlier that yes. I need to comment about. You okay. were saying you felt that as a government operator, oh, you yes. were more regulated. Yes. Unfortunately, the <laughs> private sector people think they are more regulated. So, so, so you can see. If you, some, some, some of the people in the private sector actually think that N NTA does everything mm. and nobody talks to them. <laughs> So it's glad that as an NTU pro, oh, yes. you know that you are also mm. uh, regulated. Yes, and, and, and that's what I do many times. Mm. You know, sometimes when broadcasters come to my office and they say, okay, uh, you are doing this to us, mm. what about this station? And I said, well, you are not in a position to know oh, what the George, regulator does. Exactly. So I showed them the file. Yeah. I said, okay, look at the station you think is not regulated. Mm. Look at what they have paid, 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 mm. paid. And they say, ah, is it so? And one or two occasions... We attended some public workshop and seminar where we had private sector, public sector. Mm. And I challenged the, the industry player. I said, okay, if you are an operator in Nigeria mm. and you have not been sanctioned by NBC, raise your hand. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody has been sanctioned. <laughs> so the NBC actually... Uh, is, has is, a level playing field. Absolutely. Oh. And but our, our, our concern basically is to, is to evolve a sustainable broadcast mm. industry. Mm, of course. Yeah, of course. Clean we airspace. We know, we know that there's a challenge, especially for the private operator, mm -hmm. about, about survival. Mm, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know they are very worried, too, that at time, most times they go into the market to compete for advert with the public service broadcasters, mm -hmm. quote and unquote. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that the time will come <laughs> when the Nigerian people, government and parliament, will uh, 
create money for government stations mm. so that they don't go looking for money for diesel. <laughs> yeah, and then they can concentrate on public diesel, service. Diesel, that is the common <laughs> word. <laughs> it will be on air. Exactly. All right, sir. It's mm. good uh, interactive session. I'm really enjoying myself here, and I'm sure you're doing the same too. So I'm sure you're having me to thank by featuring this, our magnets, our erudite scholar on the program today. Let's go for a quick break. When we come back, he's still here with us. We are still sharing thoughts on the broadcast industry in Nigeria. The say when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade. The year 2020 was filled with complications. The coronavirus pandemic was a setback to various economic and commercial activities. But in the midst of all these, well goal oriented organizations were still able to set their foot in the sand, standing tall and firm. Such is the case of MQAN, Electronic Media Content Owners Association of Nigeria, who were able to come together to achieve their organizational goals and objectives for the year 2020. What better way to end the year than a celebration of their achievements during the year with an end of the year get together held on Thursday, December 10th, 2020 at the Pefty Multipurpose Hall in Solo, Lagos. It was graced by the prolific Nollywood producer, Mr. Wali Adenuga, who also doubles as the BOT chairman of the organization. The event started with an opening prayer, which was closely followed by the recognition of guests. To set the motion rolling, Mr. Wali Adenuga gave the chairman opening remarks, expressing how elated he felt about the organization. It is with great joy that I welcome you all to our end of year get together. Next, I want to, thank, to say a loud and mouthful thank you to our president, to our own dear president, Madam Jibe Ologi, for taking MQAN to the next level. The host of the event, Mrs. Jibe Ologi, a president of MQAN, gave a welcome address, inching on the success of the organization throughout the year. Whatever you watch on your terrestrial, and also cable TV, a large chunk of it belongs to those who are sitting here today. Another achievement that MCOAN achieved last year is a recognition as a stakeholder with AFCON. It was time for the business seminar. The first was facilitated by Mr. Patrick Akushi, who dissected the topic content distribution and licensing. He centered his presentation on the new digital economy. The rise of streaming platforms who are using the internet to give them global reach and valuable insight into audience behavior has overturned the traditional power structures in the industry. This was closely followed by the second, which was facilitated by Mr. Yinka Debayo a leading public relations and advertising guru on the topic maximizing business relationship between media agencies and content owners. He explained the ever-growing importance of carrying out adequate research for relevance and audience needs. If content is king, are you paying the right value for content? If content is king, are you giving the content producer, the content provider, the due respect that they deserve? It's only in this country that a content owner will produce the content, will go and market, We'll buy airtime, we'll do this, and that content is actually the one enhancing the rating of the station. Yes, that same content you're telling you, don't pay, I'll pull it down. See, I don't think it's even the media agencies that you need, really. What you need is actually the audience. Because those people, the audience, is what we, the agencies, are looking for. It's what the clients are looking for. So let's focus on the audience. The very energetic facilitator justified the topic as question and answer segment provided more room to shed more light on the topic. The third facilitator, Ms. Ufoma Afe, spoke on assessing finance for creative industry. The CBN Creative Industry Financing Initiative, also known as SciFi, is an intervention fund from the CBN in collaboration with the Bankers Committee. The Bankers Committee is made up of all the banks, all the commercial banks, MDs, and they thought it wise to set aside 22.9 billion naira for the creative industry. Soon after the seminar was over, the party, fun and merrymaking began to set in as various delicious food were served. Music and dance was in the air. Mr. Teofilos Akatuba, the second vice president of MQAN, gave the organization's projection for the year 2021. MQAN, being a brainchild of our BOT chairman with all the other colleagues, have come of age and having assessed that we have a lot of content 
we have decided to give birth to the biggest television content market in Africa to be hosted here by M1, which is the Electronic Content Media Owners Association of Nigeria. It will happen in the year 2021. The vote of thank was given by Alain Ede Stephen. Guests, facilitators, and organizers moved to the dance floor to dance to the rhythmic music the DJ was playing. What is your take about the event? If you are an MCOR member, you learn about your business. You leverage on others who have been in the business for a long time. Why? Well, it's okay. It's well attended. Our members have been, we have been expecting this to happen. So we were all geared and prepared for it. It is a well thought out program. And um, there's no better moment to have organized such than now. It's been a nice one. It's quite impressive, particularly with the lectures, the quality of lectures that was presented. We learned a lot. We wish M. Kwan more success in their future endeavors. This is The Magnet. You're welcome back to a very interactive session with the Director General of National Broadcasting Commission, Professor Armstrong Idachaba. Now, sir, you talked earlier on that there's still room for stations to be owned by people. What's your counsel for anybody who wish to run a station now? I remember one of the webinars that we were on, the one before us. Mm. I asked the question, how cheap or what does it take to own a station? And somebody said, you must have a lot of money. I want you to clear the air, sir. How cheap? What's your counsel for anybody? Anyway, for instance, all, I want to own a station. First of all, anybody investing in the broadcast sector, mm. I wish to appeal to you, please invest. When you invest, you create opportunities for job. Mm. When you invest, you enlarge the potential of the broadcast industry in mm. terms of information dissemination in terms of interactiveness and public engagement. But I appeal to you too, not to control the professional activity of that broadcast station. As we see, okay. people invest in schools. I don't know how they go, whether they go to the classroom to tell <laughs> to the teachers teach. what to teach. <laughs> when, they, when they set up hospitals, they don't go and tell which doctor, oh, which go. injection to give to the patient. Mm. But in broadcasting, they want to tell the editors which story they must carry in mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'll appeal to investors in broadcasting to professional, allow the profession to run. Mm. Trust the professionals to run the industry. Mm. And I also appeal to the professionals who think that, and I've always had it to my embarrassment, he who pays the five tar, the he taste the two. How come the, 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 the piper, the, 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 the payer, does not dictate to the tune in, in the other industries? <laughs> uh, why must it be only in the broadcast sector? So we have lost our own sense of professional independence. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't pander to the whims and caprices of the owners. Try to do what is professional and you'll be respected. Mm -hmm. Now, with regards to the cost of mm -hmm. setting up, yes. thank God for the digitization. Okay. You know, technology is increasingly becoming av av available. What we see now, unlike before, and I used to teach this in mass comm class, mm -hmm. you can see broadcast channels that have offices that are not bigger than this roof. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And, you, and, the, and, and, the, and, and the content they bring is competing with NTA, that is the biggest network in Africa. <laughs> with yeah. stations all over, all over the, the world, world. Uh, with big, 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 big receivers Satellite and offices. Uh, they say chief executive, <laughs> DG, director, the uh, assistant executive director, director. The GM, WGM. So with a heavily bloated staff strength. Mm -hmm. you know, but the content delivery, which is the main focus, mm. is simpler. Right, more creatively done. Mm -hmm. so, so, so in terms of overhead, it's actually, mm -hmm. actually okay. uh, lower. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now, uh, do you really think we are telling our story enough? In terms, it boils down to local content production. Honestly, there, I, there, there are a lot of the underserved that yeah. their stories are not heard. What's your take, sir? Honestly, I believe that um, we are not telling our story enough. Nigeria is known for its variety, variety of content, mm. its diversity. Mm. Uh, not only is it in quantum, but they are also of high quality, originality. Uh, if you go to the north of Nigeria, mm. from the northern architecture mm. to the fashion, to the food, mm. you know, to the occupations, traditional mm. occupations that they do, to the daily rituals, the daily activities, and mm. other forms of engagement that they go through and move to northwest, northeast, come to the middle belt, down south. You know, the heterogeneity, 
you know, mm. of culture and tradition. Those are sources, rich sources mm. uh, to Contents. develop uh, flora and fauna. Mm. And, uh, and, and you can have various levels of recomposition, Fresh. you know, and re-estetization mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a way that you enrich programming mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. I had an argument when we released the broadcasting code and we came up with this amendment, you know, that uh, whatever you do, uh, you must uh, promote our own local uh, uh, indigenous content. And we're trying to say uh, whoever produces a content that is good for Nigerians must make it available to Nigerians. And so people were angry. But uh, we took them on to the fact that uh, uh, some of these stories are actually original to the local Nigerian people. You go to Zamfara State, for instance, or you go to Kebi, you, you go and record Argugu Fishing Festival. The mm -hmm. participants are the people. This is a tradition that has been handed over generation to generation. And then you recontemporize, you re mm -hmm. you recreate, you develop, you now commodify, mm -hmm. and then you now want to sell it mm -hmm. to the same people. So it should be exported now. If you, even if you are exporting, you, the people who also own it mm, must should have, have access. access. Free of charge. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so it's only after you serve them mm. that you can take it out. Uh, uh, but now they export mm. and they also sell it sell. at a very high cost. Mm. And, and also disengage, mm. re, you know, strat stratify mm. and inhibit mm. the original the owners. owners from their own content. <laughs> So, so we, we as, as a exactly we as a responsible <laughs> regulatory agency will not allow that mm -hmm. kind of exploitive mm. uh, tendency. Okay, before we round up, sir, I must share this experience. You know, as a young player in the industry, you want to improve, particularly in your content. I mean, your equipment and all that. And one of the good equipment you want to own is an equipment where you can see an area view, which is the drone. You know. But we got quite highly embarrassed at the airport that it's not allowed to use a drone, mm. you know. You know and it's, 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 I'm not, I don't have I mean, issues yeah. with that, mm. but people are not aware. If, for instance, I was aware, I would go through the process of maybe the application and all that. Yeah, exactly. So there is a gap, knowledge gap, in terms of sensitization and all that. Are you aware? Where do we draw the line? I'm glad you raised this to you yes. because... Um, for over two decades, uh, Europe and America have actually been trying to evolve a policy uh, regarding the use of drones, okay. uh, not only for film production, but also even in regards to uh, uh, delivery of products. Okay. I've seen in some countries where the drones um, are being employed to take one item from one place to the just other. to avoid traffic mm -hmm. and do that. Uh, but again, there are, there are security worries. Yeah. You know, Nigeria is a highly sensitive country in terms True. of yeah, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, national security security. risk. So I mean, somebody pretends he's doing a drone to shoot a movie, and in the drone there's something that will kill an entire community. So, so the security agent, mm -hmm. I think it's more of a security consciousness, okay. and also the the health environment uh, uh, complications. But but for us as regulators, mm -hmm. it's not as if it's been brought to our attention, mm -hmm. because the broadcasters are actually disseminators. You know, but those who produce, I think for the film industry, mm. it is a major worry. Mm. Uh, but listening to you, we will explore the issue further and see how much more intervention the broadcast regulator can mm. make. Uh, my director, the director in my office is here, so Matthew, take note. Mm. Uh, we will try to find out where we are with regards mm. to uh, the, the drone policy mm. and, and the creative And the industry. sensitization information, so that people mm. know. Not mm. If we knew, I mean, we won't be subjected to the harassment, so exactly. to say, exactly. and uh, exactly. then we know what to do. Exactly. Finally, sir, what's your counsel? I mean, you need to talk to Nigerians, in the, both the producers, the broadcast owner. You talked about he who did the, the piper, I mean, plays the piper, dictates the tune. Do you now think that the person who is not qualified as a broadcaster, must the person own a station? Or if you want to invest, do you turn the other way? So, you, though you said it earlier on, give us your round of, sir, your counsel to Nigerians, generally. Again, that's an interesting one. You know, uh, what I've seen over time is the tendency for owners of broadcaster, broadcasters or some capitalists to also infuse the capitalist philosophy and doctrine mm. into the broadcasting landscape mm. in terms of ownership, and succession planning. Mm -hmm. So you find sometime somebody establishes a radio station mm -hmm. and the wife mm -hmm. or, the or the son, son. <laughs> who has no broadcast experience is the deputy GM mm -hmm. or deputy chairman, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the professionals are forced to work under them. Mm -hmm. um, that's not proper. In terms of board ownership, maybe, 
But in terms of day-to-day -day mm -hmm. and operational control, mm -hmm. uh, that is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that is why we wrote in the broadcast code, there's actually a provision, mm -hmm. you know, that you cannot head a department or a unit in the broadcasting house if you do not have at least 10 years mm -hmm. cognitive Practice. experience in the broadcast industry. Good. Uh, so, but that actually is limited to the headship mm -hmm. of the core headships mm -hmm. of the areas. Okay. And of course, uh, I mean, now you know that uh, in terms of ownership, mm -hmm. an investor will not say, uh, because uh, of professional requirements, mm. uh, he will leave decision taking entirely to, you know, to somebody who is not his offspring. Mm. Uh, but mm -hmm. if, if at the level of the headship of the mm. unit, the professionals are there, mm. uh, we can only pray that the owners will heed the counsel of the professionals. Or even learn it. Some do so. <laughs> Some do so. But, but, but strangely, many of them don't make effort to learn. <laughs> <laughs> they, they think that uh, by the daily report mm, they get, that's all. Uh, they also they also begin to claim they are broadcasters. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank really, you, really man. nice uh, yeah. chatting with you and interacting with you. Thank you. So that's how it's been. You can see that I told you we had a big fish, and indeed, we have been enlightened and tutored in the broadcast industry. Thank you very much. We've had. Uh, Professor Armstrong Idajaba, the Director General of National Broadcasting Commission. Thank you again, sir, for coming. Thank you, Amina. My pleasure. Thank you, viewer, for your time. Thank you so much. The magnet it has been. If you enjoyed what you saw today, be rest assured that we'll continue to bring you quality content, quality magnets, and the major players in the various industry in Nigeria. Join us same time next week when we shall bring you another regular program. Thank you very much. See you again next week. Bye-bye.